Hey my cyber babies, welcome to the Mother Love Show. In studio with me today is Milt Larson. He is a legend in Hollywood and virtually around the world. This is the co-founder of the Magic Castle right here in Los Angeles and they are celebrating their 60th anniversary of your show that started at the Wilshire Ebell Theater called it's magic. Right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you. So we were talking about your love of magic and that you had no choice because you came from a family of magi mm -hmm. magicians. What kept you going? What keeps you going? Well, it's the love of magic mm -hmm. because magic is my life. And I've done a lot of things. I was a writer for Truth the Consequence. I've, I've had other theaters, mm -hmm. but it all comes down to magic. And, you know, the private or I mean, the Magic Castle is a private club, mm -hmm. but the uh, It's Magic show is open to the public, and I should mention that. But the uh, the whole thing is, it is all magic, and magic is, if everybody would pay more attention to fantasy and get off this miserable world that we're in, which is everybody's fighting each other, oh, name-calling in certain it's elections ridiculous. and all that sort of stuff. It, it's just wrong. Everybody should have a happy life, and everybody should have imagination that leads them to a happy life. Do you think that, because we were, I was watching this program the other day, you know, they got the virtual reality glasses, and you know, you can, they, they got the Pokemon where they're going around <laughs> falling in the ponds and what have you. Is there a, a, a concern about people going too far into the fantasy world, going too far into magic land and not really dealing with reality? I believe there's too much reality. <laughs> and I don't live in, I try not to live in the real world. They should get out of the reality and spend a little more time loving each other and going for the world of fantasy. As long as they can dream of peace why can't we have it? Oh, that's a dream, you yes. Know, so why not do it? So How have you seen the magic acts change over the years? Because, I mean, we, you know, I grew up in the pull a rabbit out of a hat and, you know, let me do a card trick, saw the lady in half, and then they come up with, let's make the Empire State Building disappear. Let's make an elephant disappear. Yeah. And, and, and how do they outdo themselves like that? Well, the thing is that technology is in today's world, magicians didn't have materials they could deal with that we could build titanium airplanes and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. They didn't have it. They had sometimes a smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the other thing is that uh, if you take the Olympic Games, for instance, mm -hmm. the competition between athletes is you have to be better than the guy before you. Yes. That's all it amounts to. Magicians, a hundred years ago, didn't have to be all that good. They were in a box car, they'd take their boxes around and saw people in half and that was it. And it didn't matter if they did anything original or not because they were going all over America. Mm -hmm. And were, today, in television, these magicians are doing miracles. And the internet, and, and where you can better, see instantly. they better than the guy just before them. So has the, so competition, the competition gotten that stiff? Yeah. It's gotten really stiff? Oh gosh, yes. So, I, you know, one of the things that I notice is that we don't see or maybe I'm just because I don't haven't gone to a magic show in a while. But are there a lot of females? Are there a lot of women magicians? And is that a, an avenue that's open for women? Well, actually, my mother was the magic lady on television back hey. in the forties, and uh, there are a lot of wonderful lady magicians out there now. But the uh, of course there are not that many. But the difference is the women in magic used to be the assistants. Exactly. She would the lady getting you, sawed in half. You could have a really you know, sophisticated guy in white tie and tails taking rabbits out of the hat, but there's always a beautiful lady there handing him something. Scantily as, clad, uh, as so, it were. And, and so the men in the audience say, oh, that's a pretty lady. Now, the pretty lady's doing the magic and the guy's standing by. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a different way. But uh, there are some very, very good lady magicians out there and... Uh, uh, my mother, again, started a magic society back in the 30s. Uh, Mrs. Houdini was a founder of that, uh, called the Magic Gals. But, but they were basically the wives of magicians. 
Uh, <laughs> now, yeah, you had to be a magic it's a gal. Different thing. Now they are the magicians, and the husbands get to do the homework. One of the, uh, you know, because they, these these magic acts are so elaborate now. They're so elaborate. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back, and we'll talk more about the elaborate, uh, elaborate. the elaboration of the magic acts. This is Milt Larson, Hollywood legend and co-founder of the Magic Castle. Hey. We'll be back.